Hi, welcome to the BizBuzz channel. I'm Larry Wilner, your host. We have Bert Sadler here today from Boxwood Strategies. He's a consulting recruiter. So Bert, tell us a little bit about what a consulting recruiter is. Hi Larry, thanks for having me. So if you look at the business world, the most complex part of all businesses and the most critical part of every business are the people that work there. Recruiting is one aspect of what it takes to grow a business, as well as the compensation, as well as the alignment. So as a consulting recruiter, I'm involved in all of those aspects, not just putting someone in a seat. Can you give us some specifics about what you do day to day in relation to that? My day to day is I work and am interactive usually with the business leader, the CEO, the vice president, the hiring manager, and I work with them as a trusted advisor they explain to me and we talk about the business problem they need to solve. You know, in some cases it is. We need to bring in a vice president or a CFO or a business development person. And part of my role in the beginning is let's talk really about what's the business problem you're trying to solve. Let's define that, let's declare that, and then let's go get the right person that can technically meet that objective but also fits the culture of your organization. You know, all of this makes sense and it works as long as the rest of the pieces are in place. If you're going to pay them the right way, if you're going to motivate them the right way, if your organization is aligned so you get the optimal performance out of the people that you bring in, and ultimately if you can get your business to get to the place that you want to get it to. All those pieces need to be in place and part of my role is to have experience and knowledge to help my client get there. Is there one particular piece of that puzzle that you think you focus most of your time on when you're dealing with the CEOs of these companies? I think it's trust. Um, you know, that's the most important part of today's business world. If, if you and your client can reach the place in a relationship where you have trust, there's really not much you can accomplish. I, I don't think there's a CEO out there who doesn't want the advice and guidance from someone who is providing it for the purpose of helping them get better. I've said to a number of my clients, you pay me way too much for me to tell you what you want to hear. Most of them are shaking their heads saying, I, I can find those people all day long. They're a dime a dozen. I, I want someone who can help me grow and tell me what I might be missing and tell me what I need to do to get to the next level. So you help kind of make help them make critical judgments in terms of where they need to go as far as hiring, whatever that position might be. I serve as sort of that objective piece. Now again, when you're talking to members of the uh, candidate community, look, if you're a candidate, you're not objective. You're emotional about right. yourself. Sure. And if you own a business, you're also emotional about your business. I'm neither of those. I, I don't have an emotional connection to the candidate. My client is hiring me to bring in business experience and business advice. So I sort of serve as that piece in the middle where I'm objectively able to evaluate the best talent for my client. And I'm also able to talk to my client offline and say, you know, maybe here's where we need to spend our time. Or are, are you just missing some components about what candidates are asking and the things that we need to tell them? Now, again, that's a dimension, but we can't overlook the need for a good compensation plan. Uh, you can get all the great people in the world, but if you're not going to pay them well or not going to incentivize them or not going to reward them for good, good performance, they're going to leave. Right. So as a dispassionate observer, you can assess the situation more accurately than maybe a CEO can yes. who's got vested interests. I would disagree with the term passionate. I'm very I passionate. I said dispassionate. Yes, I'm very passionate. Oh, you're passionate. So I would say dispassionate. I'm very not dispassionate. Uh, I, I'm enthused. Neutral, how's that? Yeah, neutral is a good word. Okay. Objective is the one I would recommend. How about a neutral, objective observer? We're there. Does that make it? Sure. We're good, We're good. So what are some of the other hurdles you find in terms of hiring, in terms of the people that now you're recruiting? What, what's the single, is there, are there a couple of main issues that you, you wrestle with all the time with, with recruits in those situations? Yeah, the, there's, there's this drone that encourages job seekers to sit in front of an employer and essentially say, hire me, I can do anything. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've never met someone who can do anything. It, right. It's really bad advice. It's been going on for years, and it's a lot of work on my part to put a candidate at ease and say, I don't think you can do everything. You don't need to. Here's our business challenge. Talk to us. 
Let's see if you can help us solve this problem and if you fit the culture. So now we've changed the dynamics of the conversation. And part of what I do, part of what my business does is I, I'm an agent of change. Uh, we are deliberately disrupting the typical recruiting world that says, hey, Mr. or Mrs. CEO, don't pay me until you've hired my candidate. Um, th that model, in my opinion, supports ramming a resume down an employer's throat for the purpose of the recruiter getting a right, commission. Right, just getting a commission. Candidates are, are very poorly served, and employers aren't served at all in that model. Uh, beyond that, if you've got several of those folks doing exactly the same thing, they're competing against their client. Sure. What smart business person would ever go into business competing against their client? Beyond that, it's a casual event. Uh, if it doesn't work out, if they can't find who they want, they move on. Right. And that business never gets their problem solved. So, so is, is this a new model in terms of the way recruiters work? It, it's a, it's in a variation of a long-term model where most of the time it is based upon pay me when you when I hire someone. Mine says I'm not sure that's the right answer. Mine says, let's have a business agreement. Let's have a fixed fee, flat fee. I, I don't find that going on many places in this industry, if any. Uh, it is a little bit of a business risk on my part, but at the same time, it instills the trust factor with that CEO. If that CEO and I have made a commitment and that CEO knows I don't have an agenda to have the candidate get paid more so I can get paid more, we are already on a foundation of trust. Right. It, and you know, at the same time, the most expensive candidates aren't always the best ones. So this encourages me to go look for folks who might be making a little less, but could otherwise be a great choice. And it also puts me in a position to give advice to my client about what I'm seeing without my having an agenda. You gotta hire this person in order for me to get paid. Get paid right. And then, so now we come up with another dimension. By the fact of, we don't have to hire this person for me to get paid, I treat the candidates extremely well. Mm. And in some cases, the candidates that get rejected come back and hire me later. Well, plus I would imagine the CEO becomes more of a stakeholder in the process, right? Because they're already, they're paying you. Yes. So now they have, uh, they, they have some, some, you know, stuff in the game. They have something in the game. It's funny, I laugh when you said that, because in some, my business model is we agree to, we agree to a number, and a third of that is paid in the beginning. And I'm asked on occasion why, and my answer to the CEO is, I need you to call me back. Right. And they laugh, right. and inevitably they say, right. you're right, sure. I do. Absolutely. And now we're back to, is your hiring process casual, or is your hiring process formal? And if your hiring process is casual, and if you can't find who you want, and it really is too difficult, the recruiter moves on, your business still has the same problem. Guess what? The really good candidates were disenchanted and never signed up to express a level of interest. If you have a formal process, it might take place in 15 days, 30 days, 45 days, might take a little bit longer, it's going to be done. Right. Now, when the CEOs call you, are they calling you because they're at their end of the road, they can't find anybody, they're desperate, or are they being proactive? Are they saying, well, let, let's call this gentleman because maybe he can help us find better candidates than we've had in the past? I mean, what's, what's your sense of why they're calling you? The reality is I don't run into a whole lot of CEOs who get up in the morning and say, let me spend money, I don't have to. Right. And to some degree, any good CEO has, has a sense of ego. I can do this. In almost every case, that CEO has attempted to do some sort of hiring on their own. And for whatever reason, and there are many, it didn't work out. Now they're coming to me saying, here's the challenge I've had, or here's what I can't do, or in some cases, here's what I'm trying to figure out. One of, my, one of them in the last year said to me, I want a CEO. I thought that was kind of strange because he looked pretty healthy. And I was, what do you mean? I want a CEO. We, we, we went around and around for a little while, and finally I got into the place where it was a COO. Ah. And so part of my role there was to have enough understanding of what he was describing to be able to interpret it beyond his emotional blindness into an objective perspective of you need an operations person for your business to get to the next level. Well, do you find that you, you have to do a lot of that with the CEOs to help define in their own minds what they really do need? Well, they yes. may label it one thing, but yes. reality dictates that they really need something completely different. Well, this is the description of what I think a consultant should be doing. Hmm. I'm bringing to the table experience that involves what a good, what a, the right compensation ought to be. I'm bringing to the table 
what you really can expect to get out of a human being. Any, any of us would like to hire the perfect person. Sure. Um, they don't exist. Right. So to have someone who's got a plethora of qualifications, you're going to be looking for them for the rest of your life and you're never going to have enough money to pay them. So part of my role is let's focus on the three or four critical things. And a, and a lot of good hiring managers need help with that, which becomes a critical part of my role. So what do you attribute your success to? Obviously, you're good at what you do. Uh, what is it that you bring to the table that you feel allows you to be as successful as you are in the field that you are in? Well, I think part of it <clears throat> starts with, uh, in my early 20s, I had a sales role, which put me in almost every conceivable business you could think of and put me in a number of different conversations. So I've been pursued by recruiters. Uh, I didn't like it. In many cases, I couldn't wait to run and take a shower with a wire brush because I thought that's not a good model. Time changed and I became one and I said at that point, I don't really think how it's been done is necessarily the best way to do it. The candidate, the talent, isn't really being thought of enough and without the talent, the process doesn't work. Right. And without the talent and your talent in mind, the compensation process doesn't work. So at age 55, part of what makes this work is I've been there. I've been in transition. I know how painful that is. I've seen bad comp plans. I've seen bad uh, recruiting models. And I really think the recruiting model today is a sales model, not an HR model, not a human resources model. It's being able to go out and interact with people and make someone on the other side feel comfortable. Can you define that a little bit? So when you say the HR model is different than the sales model, can yeah. you be a little bit more specific sure. about that? So let's go back in time a little bit because th that's a critical part of how the business world uh, unfolds. Things keep changing and where we were isn't where we're going. There was a time in the past where the human resource person uh, was responsible for doing hiring and doing uh, employee relations and benefits, et cetera. In today's world, benefits and employee relations have become very complicated. If you're good at it, you can really save your employer a lot of money. But the people that do that well are more on the analytical side, sitting at a desk, working on a computer all day, in some cases, not even interacting with other people because that's not sure. what turns them on. I'm on the other side of that coin. Please don't put me in a room with a computer and no windows. Shoot me now. I'm out front. I'm out interactive with folks. And I think in today's marketplace, what was defined as human resources really isn't anymore. There's human resources today, employee relations, benefits, and those levels of expertise. And then there's outward facing business interaction, which could be called a version of recruiting. But I think it's promoting your business talking to business people, having a front row seat of what the changes are and where that's, and having the personality of, I need to be out there. And those two aspects are completely divergent. Right, right. One's more people oriented, one, like you say, one's is more, more analytical. analytical oriented. Yes. And so it's difficult to really combine the two. So, that, so when you say the sales model, you're really talking about interacting with people, business development type of situations that you're in, and then just extrapolating from that, gets involved in recruiting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It, and it, it doesn't stop there. It gets involved in business growth. Mm -hmm. Where's the problem that your business faces today and what's the path forward to it? Maybe it's simply taking some of the existing talent you have and redefining their responsibility. That's a version of business growth. Maybe it's figuring out a better compensation model to motivate and get, and get better performance. So your experience gives you a wide range of, uh, I guess, vantage point. Yes. So you can sit and you can hear the CEO, you can listen to what he needs, analyze his business, and try and kind of dovetail the two things together to understand what the, who the best recruit is going to be in that to, to satisfy that situation. And at the same time, you, you have the ability to analyze the recruit to see, to help them pare down what exactly is your expertise that's going to fit that mold and you're able to put all that together as a big puzzle. It is a puzzle. At the same time, if, if you've been in the business world for a while, and one of the questions I get is, what's your niche? What's the marketplace where you have a specialty? What's the position you, that you specialize in? And my answer in today's marketplace is, it can't be. The answer has got to be, my specialty is, I understand how businesses work. 
I don't need to be an expert of the film industry right. to go bring a film company talent. I sure. need to understand the dynamics of how that flows. Look, most businesses are very similar. You need to drive revenue, you need to have operations, you need to have finance, you need to have leadership. And that, that, that crosses over almost any industry out there. More importantly, you need to have that trust with the CEO. So I would submit to you that I would abandon the whole niche focus and I've got to be able to walk into any business and be comfortable if they need to drive revenue or address finance or address operations or address leadership and be able to run lockstep with what's the business focus we're chasing without being distracted by what is the expertise that your business has because that to some degree isn't relevant. Right. So there are these big recruiting companies right, that just recruit lots of people, manpower. I think Aerotech is also in that space as well, if I'm not mistaken. You're way different than that, right? I would like to think I'm way right, different they're, than that. They're manning call centers, they're manning, you know, Walmart needs 5,000 employees nationwide, that's what they're doing. You're not involved in any of that. No. You're, you're involved in the single, uh, we have a job position open for, that we need a certain amount of expertise to solve a certain problem, and you're the guy that puts all that together. And I usually am hired for the hard ones. For the hard ones. Right. So in, in that realm, there is the so-called headhunter community or contingent recruiters. You just right. described that model. And then at the upper end, there are what's called global executive search firms. Right. And uh, their work is rather exclusive. Uh, and I, I worked for one of those at a period of time, learned the business that way. And I would submit to you, mine's similar, but again, my difference is I'm on that fixed fee, flat fee, which neither of those models falls under. Sure. So you're an independent contractor? It's I'm, your own business? I'm an owner-operator. You're an owner-operator? How does somebody find you? How do we find Bert Sadler from Boxwood Strategies? www.boxwoodsearch.com will open up the website for Boxwood Search, Boxwood Strategies, the articles I write for thought leadership that get published in an international magazine, a couple of videos of my process and discussions on compensation models and recruiting. Well, it's terrific. I'm so glad you could come in today and explain, this, explain your, your world to us and to hopefully give our audience a little bit of clarity in terms of what uh, a recruiter like yourself does and how you accomplish uh, your work for companies and for people that are looking to be hired. So thank you. I thank appreciate you, you being here today. And we want to thank everybody in our audience for visiting BizBuzz channel today. Again, I'm Larry Wilner, your host, and stay tuned for future broadcasts.